Okay, so welcome back to Sprague River Homestead. Today, we're gonna to talk about one of the three foundations of a homesteading. Those three are food, water, and shelter for you and your livestock. Today, we're gonna to talk about water on the homestead, and I'm gonna give you an in-depth look at our watering system and some of the concerns we had to face while we put in a complete system that'll hopefully get you on track for your system when you put it in. The first thing to consider is how the water comes to your homestead. You could be connected to city or county water or like us here at Sprague River Homestead, we actually have our own well. Now our well comes in 330 feet below ground. It is pumped out with a two horse, 240 volt pump. Now the reason we've gone with something that large is that our pump is able to flow at least 50 gallons per minute at the head and the 240 volt pump is actually pretty commercially available. Not worried about replacement, it's economical and it's available. Once our water comes up from the well, it runs underground down to a cistern. And now we'll take you into that piece. So the water will leave from the well, which is behind the camera, and you can see it runs all the way down to the house and the shop. Now that's approximately 500 linear feet of tubing and we've also taken into account with the two horse uh, well pump there, the loss in that tubing of pumping water down to about 500 feet. So if it came out at 50 gallons per minute at the well, it returns down to the cistern down in the shop at about 30 gallons per minute or 33, somewhere in there. So you're gonna lose approximately 20 to maybe 30, 40% based on the tubing size. So keep that in mind of the distance you have to pump water from your well to your storage tank if you have one and what the pumping loss is going to be. Once the water leaves the well head, it then comes down 500 feet down to the shop. So if you see this black tubing coming in, this actually comes up through the concrete slab. We had this in place prior to putting in the slab floor of the shop. And what it comes up there, now I've got a shut off here that I can turn it off and block the water from coming in here I've also got uh, distribution tubes of the incoming water that go out to pieces for the garden in that so we can water the garden, run it off the well rather than running off the cistern itself and making the pump here, the smaller pump in here for the house, push water back out. So consider that your well may be able to push water a couple hours a day maybe to water your garden versus trying to come out of the cistern. What we have here is an 1100 gallon cistern that holds water for us. And the blue piece there is a pressure tank that holds up to 40 PSI. So I've got a water pump that comes out of this that's gravity fed into there, pushes 40 PSI up into the blue pressure tank. And then when you flush the toilet or take a shower or anything else, it's going to take the pressure first out of the blue pressure tank and use that to go out. Now it will, has a pressure sensitive there that when it feels like the pressure is getting low, it will turn that pump on and refill and repressurize the blue tank. But that takes up some of the slack of running a sink, a toilet, a shower, or anything else. So you don't have to worry about constantly running a pump, especially when you're on solar, you don't want to constantly have an electrical draw for a pump itself. Now, one of the big reasons to have water storage is obviously having more than you need available. The bad power days in that, we can just let this draw down and I don't have to worry about starting the generator because I don't have enough power to run it off of solar. This will give us at least two or three days that I can use this in the winter and I don't have to worry about pumping water out of the well. I can just pull it out of here. So now that you know where our water is kept, let me show you how we distribute it back out. So the first distribution point outside of the cistern is literally on the opposite side of the wall, on the outside of the wall, from the room where the electrical and the water is kept. Now this has a shut off on the inside and we also keep it covered during the winter. Nikki does the watering for the rabbits in any of the tent over here for rabbits and chickens. And it's literally just a shut off there, a drain back shut off that when you turn the water off, it drains out and it tries to prevent freezing in the winter. Okay, so the next distribution point after it leaves the shop is going to be up near the garden and the greenhouses. 
So what, what I have right here is one of the distribution blocks that I have a shutoff valve in. Now all of my lines outside on the property are below our frost line. The frost line is the point at which the ground stops freezing in the deeper winter. So for us, downwards into the ground of 30 inches, water would freeze. So I've got all of our lines buried approximately 36 inches in the ground, which is below our frost line and keeps them so they do not freeze in the winter. So the water runs underground from the shop to these distribution points. One up, comes up here. Now this is run off of our blue pressure tank. And the distribution block here actually tees off and sends water out to the garden and to the dome, our geodesic dome. I can shut it off during the winter and the well pump does not pump water into those. It only goes to the cistern. Now further along down the driveway are our barns where we keep all of our goats and some of our dogs. I also have shutoffs down here for the same water system. So this stops some of the hose coming from the well going out to the field. And I've also got a shutoff here that goes down into the ground that feeds off of the cistern and the water tank. Now these, I don't pump more than a few gallons out a day. If I go to fill up a trough, maybe 50 gallons, really not a lot of water usage coming out of these. So I keep them down and these are drained back also that drain into the ground so they won't freeze. So now that you've seen our system basically from front to where it's going to, distributed out and where it ends, let's talk about the things you really need to be considerate of when you're building your system up. First thing, as I said on the well pump, make sure it's relatively economical, it's easily replaced if needed, and I'm always going to say on your water system, go a little bit bigger than you need. It's very easy to spend a little bit more on the front end and not have to worry about replacing it having the durability long term. Most of our stuff on our property is based on a 30 year value system to where I don't want to have to replace anything for 30 years. So if somebody says I need a half horsepower pump, I'm going to go to a three quarter pump just because I don't have to work it as hard to get the same thing out. It's worth spending a little bit more on the front to get the long term durability out of it. All of your piping should be considerate of pumping losses. So remember, the longer you, or farther you have to pump water, the more loss you're gonna have in that system. So go a little bit bigger on the tubing size than you think you need. And if you need help calculating stuff, there is great stuff out on the internet showing you how long and how much loss you're gonna be between your well and a cistern. So again, put in a cistern, a storage holding tank, that way you don't have to constantly run water all the time. You can have a storage bank and just turn that over as you need to every few days based on how you're living. Add a storage tank for the small term losses like watering animals or flushing a toilet. And then always worry about your frost line. How deep inside the ground do you need to put your lines to prevent freezing in the coldest part of winter for what you are? One of the great questions we always get is what would we do differently on our water system based on how we live? The simple answer to that is I would have put out more distribution points. We've added some bird buildings in the back of the property and I have to carry buckets from the closest distribution point to there. Knowing that we would have added more bird buildings in the back, I would have run a line out to those to prevent having to carry buckets so far during the winters and the summers. But other than that, our system is actually oversized to what we really need, and it's designed that way. Because remember, it's a long-term game running a homestead. So with that, hopefully you guys have learned a little bit about a water system and how we run our water system. If you have any additional questions on anything I haven't covered, you know where to find us. So if that's it for today on Spray River Homestead on using your water system to your advantage, We'll see you next time.